This was the birth of Knights of Ren? Why is that? Explain it to me. <coughs> Greetings, Escriva here. And yes, I do know that the surname of Sabine is Ren. And the Knights of Ren are written without that W. But what if that is just an alternate spelling? If we assume that it is possible and take a look at the ending scene of Star Wars Rebels Season 3, Episode 15, Trials of the Darksaber, where Kanan, Ezra and Fen Rao profess their loyalty to Sabine, no matter what course she would eventually choose, what are we witnessing? Three of them bending their knees before Sabine, who wields the legendary sword, <coughs> yeah, uh, saber, sorry, that somehow resembles in my mind with the knighthood, and especially one legend, legend of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Member Excalibur, legendary sword, the knights kneeling before the wielder of it, blah blah blah, for sure others of rebels either do want to tease us some facts of the origins of Knights of Ren or they are just fooling us. Well, maybe they are just fooling me. Anyhow, I wouldn't think of such speculation around this theme if not for the resemblance of Ezra's character with the looks of Benicio del Toro who is the cast member of the Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. We are not sure whom he's going to play, but judging by the looks, it could be a well-aged Ezra Bridger, one of the Knights of Ren. I do not know what could have happened to those characters in order for them to turn back on the light side of the force. But let's just not forget that they are surely not the kind of Jedis like we used to know. Technically, they are not Jedis at all. Kanan tries to follow the old teachings, yet he is not resembling the kind of attitude like Yoda, Obi-Wan or Mace Windu used to have. And Ezra? He had his doubts about usage of just the light side of the force before. He is a powerful force user, yet admires the efficiency or philosophy. And Fan Rao? Well, this guy is Mandalorian. Enough said. Mix some Mandalorian kind of fascism with the occult practices of Grey Force users gathering around mythical artifacts and a charismatic leader, Joan of Arc alike maybe, who is more of a symbol and then you get an order that has its agenda over everything else. By fighting something long enough, you can win and eventually become alike to what you have fought so long. This was the sub theme of all the previous Star Wars movies. Fall to the dark side. Obsessive rebellion. When you have thousand times less resources than your enemy does, that can lead you to doing some pretty gruesome things. Deal with the wrong people, kill the innocent. At some point, rebellion can become worse than the oppressors. Like it or not, but Empire does keep at least some sort of order in the galaxy. And Rebels? To destroy Empire, they must destroy order first. When people will notice that the Empire cannot control its territories, Empire shall fall. But what will come instead of it? Power vacuum cannot last long, and the new force will come eventually. And maybe this force is going to be led by the same fanatics that joined forces and formed an order that did not share Jedi dogmas and wasn't built on the pillars of the old Republic, therefore did not have to deal with the constraints of the Senate, like Empire did. This new force shall be more ruthless than the Empire and the Jedi Sith dogmas are to be surpassed. Grey users of the Force are more efficient, after all. By the way, notice that not only the users of the Force are into this knee bending. Just like Knights of Ren, Force users and those non-sensitive to the Force are training together, thus eliminating the kind of arrogance Jedi's and for sure Sith used to have. It was Escriva, share your thoughts in the comments below, subscribe, see ya.